Hello everyone, good morning to you. Uh, no cheerful soul limbo music today, I'm afraid, because this is uh, a very sad morning. We confirm the final test between England and India has been called off, essentially because the Indian team is concerned about a possible rise in the number of COVID cases in the camp, and so they can't put out a team. The result is yet to be decided. The initial statement reported that the match had been forfeited, actually, but that's now been retracted and will be decided upon by the ICC. Um, before we do anything else, let me bring a statement here. This is all that we've had. It's a very short statement, uh, and it reads, Following ongoing conversations with the BCCI, the ECB can confirm that the fifth LV insurance test between England and India due to start today at Emirates Old Trafford will be cancelled. Due to fears of a further increase in the number of COVID cases inside the camp, India are regrettably unable to field a team. We send our sincere apologies to fans and partners for this news, which we know will cause immense disappointment and inconvenience to many. And further information will be shared in due course, is how that reads. So, where are we? Well, the Oval, of course, for the last Test match, we knew that three Indian coaches, including the head coach, Ravi Shastri, all tested positive for COVID-19. They were not able to travel up here to Manchester. They've actually stayed back in their hotels in London. And on Wednesday, the reserve physio uh, also tested positive for COVID. And, of course, the fear was that he'd been treating uh, a number of the players, not least uh, Rohit Sharma, Cheshwa Pajara, who were injured in the course of that uh, match at the Oval. Um, but a, a, a further round of tests uh, proved that the players were all all negative although the physio did test positive so that was the lack of confidence really that we're hearing about from the Indians about the tests that they have taken so we've got Michael Vaughan alongside me I've got uh, Vic Marks there as well it's a desperately sad scene we're walking to the ground today uh, it's just incredibly hollow really and you walk through and you and you, you consider all, all the ramifications of a match being called off and you think about well, the players, you think about the, the administrators, think about the fans, of course, those who have bought tickets, and we saw them still loitering around outside the gates. Some have been allowed in. Uh, there are some sitting on the hotel balconies there, looking a bit confused. You wonder when they first heard about this news, and so on. You walk in, you see all the concession stands set up, barrels and barrels of beer, and all the fast food places, uh, again, just, just ready to go. And it's rather a confused sort of atmosphere about it all what's what's going to happen to all of that and it's a, it's just a really weird feeling of the ground staff out there arms folded sort of loitering around really looking at the pitch which is covered uh, and it just feels utterly empty doesn't it michael good morning yeah uh, good morning um yeah it, it's so sad um you know i i always start with the fan sport is nothing without the fans and to see um you know many outside the ground uh, many that would have traveled uh, i i bumped into one gentleman who travelled down from Edinburgh mm. uh, feel desperately sorry for the, the supporters that won't uh, see today's play won't see the test match uh, desperately disappointed for the club Lancashire County Creek Club the the pandemic's hit them hard you know last year it was a, an awful time for them they're a, an events company at, you know if you look at the operation here at Old Trafford and these next few days were desperate for, for their coffers uh, for the test series it's been magnificent the cricket has been brilliant to see so you know we're missing the, the finale of what could be a, a great, great test match. Um, you know, I, I do look at these times and it's difficult. Mm. You know, it, it's, it's hard and it's hard to point the finger at players because of what they've gone through in the last year and a half. But I honestly, India have let English cricket down. I honestly feel that, that to pull out at the last, 12 o'clock last night, to pull out. You know, how's this not been done before? Um, you know, all the players have been tested negative. Mm. Of course, they've been around a physio, and I think that is the key in this, that uh, clearly that physio would have touched many of them over the last few days. So uh, I have a little bit of sympathy for that. Um, and they but, did all test negative. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I go back to the last year, December, England did a similar thing to South Africa. Yep. So, you know, England kind of set the precedent for this kind of thing. There was no vaccinations back then, though. Um, but I do feel, I felt at the time that English cricket let South African cricket down last December. And then Australia won't tour South Africa on the back of what England did. So there's ramifications and there's kind of a, uh, a, a snowball effect that happened from their decision. Um, you know, so England have got big muscles, bigger muscles than South Africa. They, they flex them back then. I believe that India have flexed their muscles. You know, they, uh, you know, they've got the IPL starting yes. in, in a week or so's time. Players will be absolutely petrified of picking up the virus having to quarantine and miss out on, on IPL games um, the BCCI would have be scared to death that the Indian players wouldn't be able to get over and play in the IPL it's uh, a 300 million 
£100,000 tournament for the BCCI. This, will, I believe, will cost the ECB around 20 to £30 million. Uh, so what goes from here, the fact that it, the forfeit, which was read out early mm. this morning, now has kind of been manoeuvred that that's not the case. They haven't forfeited the match. Uh, this will be a long legal process, I, I guess, going forward to decide on, on, on where the costs of this week yes. will lay. And I do think, I mean, I, I just feel that uh, you know, I might be strong in this and I'm sure I'll get, I honestly feel Indian cricket have let, let the English game down to pull out at such a, to a the last minute. Um, uh, there's 26 players in the squad or 25 players I'm pretty sure 11 could have been played today it did seem last night as if everything's going to go ahead yeah. doesn't it I mean you went to, went to bed and thought well, that's fine there's a test match tomorrow they're all tested negative and mm. uh, all the vibes were there but there was a statement from the ECB they all looked to be going ahead but there's nothing from the BCCI at the time but let me just read this statement from Lancashire Cricket anyway Lancashire Cricket has issued the below statement following on from the ECB's announcement this morning cancelling the final test match Daniel Gidney he's the chief executive said as a club we're absolutely devastated stated about the late cancellation of the test match we'd like to unreservedly apologize to ticket holders and all those who have or are due to travel to Old Trafford a full refund will be issued but we appreciate for many supporters attending this test match it's more than just the monetary worth after the last 18 months of all experience with the pandemic it's a fixture cricket fans in the northwest have looked forward to for the best part of 18 months you can't underestimate the work that goes into preparing for a five-day test match i'd like to thank all our supporters guests suppliers partners and all those involved for their continued support i'd also like to thank all the amazing staff who work at old Trafford who've worked tirelessly to prepare the ground for this test match we have an incredibly loyal and talented group of people who've worked very long hours in the run-up to this game we're working closely with the ecb on the next steps and the finer detail that will follow as a consequence of this cancellation the club will contact ticket and hospitality holders that's an important aspect you according to the state will you will be contacted you have a ticket uh, you will be contacted by the club uh, who'd like to again uh, express its sincere apologies for all the inconvenience and disruption caused to all involved it's a sad statement mm. uh, and, and reflects, I think, the mood that everyone feels here this morning. If I was tuning in and expecting to hear us, uh, well, I might be doing the toss now, <laughs> interviewing Joe Root and, and Virat Kohli, but it's not going to happen. Uh, the series is over. Uh, this match has been, uh, well, cancelled at the moment, I think is probably the most accurate way uh, to describe what's happened. Basically, the Indians have said they couldn't put a team out, uh, and that is going to be that. Let's bring in Deep Das Gupta. Uh, hello, Deep. I mean, you're on your way to the IPL shortly, aren't you? So you're not actually with us yes. in, in person, but I wonder how surprised you are by this news. I am surprised because still last night the news that I heard was, uh, you know, there would be a test match will go on. And it is it is quite um, uh, quite disappointing as as Michael mentioned about it's end of the day it's about the supporters about the fans about all the stakeholders and I think one of the biggest stakeholders are the fans who pay so much of money to come to the ground so it is disappointing uh, for sure uh, but what I also know is from a player's perspective uh, they're all in isolation they've all locked the, they locked themselves up uh, and some of them and most of them rather are here with their families now one of the biggest concern for them is they're with kids as well so what if the both the parents are tested positive for example yogesh parmar the physio who's recently tested positive he's double vaccinated uh, so i mean even he's he's tested now positive so i think a lot of these these players who have their kids over as well are are extremely petrified with with you know what has been happening that's an interesting point you make about uh, about uh, all of that. And I wonder, I'll also toss something else your way deep. I mean, R Ravi Shastri, who's very influential, uh, very used to, to, to life over here after all, and so on. I mean, he's not here, head coach. He's in yeah. London because he, he tested positive. I, I, I just wonder, ha had he been here uh, with his sort of guidance and experience and, and general sort of common sense, whether, whether that might have be, be, been different? Uh, I doubt because I know for a fact that there's been a lot of, uh, you know, chat that's been happening since morning between the players, the BCCI and the ECB. Uh, so it was, I mean, this is, a, uh, I mean, uh, I know this is last moment because there, there was a lot of effort being put in for both from BCCI and ECB's uh, end to make sure uh, we have uh, a test match here. But I guess... You know, that didn't happen because I, I know for a fact till 9.30 this morning, I think 9, 9.30ish or whatever, uh, they were all speaking to each other if there is any way possible or uh, to continue with the test match. 
witnessing here on a screen that's being reported, I don't know where, that the BCCI have offered to reschedule the fifth test match, that yes. both the boards will work towards mm. finding a window to reschedule this test. Well, they are due to come over next summer, I think, aren't they, to play yeah. some a T20 series? I mean, whether that, whether that could be ex put into an already packed... <laughs> we don't even talk about schedules this summer, uh, but if they can put uh, the, the, the one-off test match into that, uh, well, that, that, was, that would be something. Let's bring in Victor. Um, more or less unprecedented, I think, this, Victor. I mean, you've seen a few games, well, as I have, that have been cancelled or abandoned, um, but... I, I can't think of one before a ball was bowled under Not these sort quite of circumstances. Like this. No, um, we've. I mean, there is that same feeling that Michael was talking about—a numb sort of disappointment. Really, mm. the, build, the series is building up into a great climax. We've been in the Caribbean and we've seen a ten-ball test match yep. when the mm. the outfield was like a sandpit. Yes. We've seen another one in Jamaica, which lasted a little bit longer when the ball was flying around Mark Butcher's ears briefly and mm. Alex Stewart's and so forth. I think Butcher's very briefly, weren't they? Yeah, one ball, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and then there is that precedent, not very close precedent, but the 2006 game at the Oval, where yes. the game initially was forfeited. Uh, when Pakistan didn't take the field after tea, I think on the Saturday or the Sunday. But nothing quite like this, but we are in strange, strange yes. times. And that one actually went back, reverted to being yeah. forfeited, actually, which, which, if you look at it accurately, was, was, was the right... Was well, it was, right, a, it they, was they, amazing, because it was... They didn't come out to Initially, play. it was the umpires and the match referees said Pakistan had forfeited the game, England have won. Within a couple of years, that had been retracted, and then a year after that... Um, they reverted to an England win, so I don't know how the bookmakers are going to sort that one no. out, or how they did sort that out. I mean, that'll be an issue even for this game. Of course, uh, it's it another side issue. Um, right, it's a BCCI statement now. Though. This is the first word that we've heard from them on the subject. The Board of Control for Cricket in India, BCCI, along with ECB, have jointly decided to call off the fifth test match. You know the politics at play here, can't you? Uh, the first statement we have was it had been forfeited. Uh, now this one says it's been jointly decided to call off the fifth test starting at Manchester. Uh, the BCCI and the ECB held several rounds of discussion to find a way to play. However, the outbreak of COVID-19 in the Indian team contingent forced the decision of calling off the Old Trafford test match. In lieu of the strong relationship between BCCI and ECB, the BCCI has offered to ECB a rescheduling of the cancelled test match. And both the boards will work towards finding a window to reschedule it. The BCCI has always maintained that the safety and well-being of the players is of paramount importance and there will be no compromise on that aspect. That's what the BCCI has to say, but you can see you know, the different... Uh, the, the spin the, doctors are the different, working hard. Yes, they yeah. were, yes. Routes in which it's being well, taken. Let, let, let's be honest, this wasn't a joint decision. <laughs> let's put that straight away no. to bed. I mean, England, England obviously wanted to play, but, you know, <laughs> but there are millions of pounds at stake and everything else. And, I mean... Social media, we all that goes on there, but this will be round about for decades about who yeah. won that series. Virat Kohli, I mean, this is what, you know, does it surprise you? I mean, Virat Kohli had so much pinned on this series. His legacy, his whole captaincy legacy depended on on, on winning this series. I mean, all of that. Well, does and, it depend on a law court now? As well, to exactly. Who, who's, well, I mean, it'd be it's faintly ridiculous but, to I waste know. lawyers' money yeah. or our people's money on lawyers to decide what's the outcome of this series. Mm. They'll probably have to do it. Yeah. Ali, go on, you've been pouring through uh, archive and records and regulations and stuff. Well, just, just trying to figure out, Agus, of what Vic is saying about how the result could be determined because, yeah, that BCCI statement saying, yes, they're offering to reschedule the match and their use of terminology saying, yes, we've decided to call it off. That still gives no Jointly indication. Jointly call it off is what it well, says. <laughs> that's the yes, key word, I think. from the BCCI, yes. 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 Yeah. Whether that's been signed off by the ECB, whether they would yeah. agree to that remains to be seen. But um, so if... Ordinarily, Vic was referring back to that 2006 test match at the Oval. If a team refuses to play, that is a forfeiture and the match referee determines that and therefore the match is awarded to the other side. And on the face of it, you could look at this situation and say, well, there were no positive cases amongst the Indian team, therefore a team was fit to take the field, it's a forfeiture. However, the ICC rules state that for, for tests affected by COVID, a match can be cancelled rather than forfeited if there is a significant impact of COVID-19. So if no... On no the test team or is that just full stop? <laughs> that doesn't specify. Right, OK. So there's a lot of... I think there's a lot, a lot of grey area. Yeah, so if, if there's no 
discussion or if a, you know, another test match doesn't get rearranged and we're left with this situation as is, then the argument would seem to be that the ECB believe that the test was forfeited. The BCCI would argue that COVID has had a significant impact and therefore it should not be a forfeiture, it should be a cancellation. Now, if no agreement can be made, then it seems to be that it can go through to the ICC's Disputes Resolution Committee, which doesn't seem like a terribly quick solution not to anyone. But, but, that, but that is the recourse that, that yeah. they could go to if they can't reach a real yeah. agreement. I mean, they've got to. You know, it's, 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 it's too important for BCCI and ECB to fall out. I mean, they, they've got to maintain some <laughs> well, sort of were, relations. No one falls out with India if they can help it nowadays. Um, but the distinction between... The difference between the situation before the Oval Test match and this Test match, I mean, I'm just trying to get my head around how different is it a physio as opposed to Ravi as the team director and his mm. two coaches? I mean, is that a significant yeah. difference? I don't know. Victor, if you go back to the start of the um, the summer, you know, the, the Indian team, it, there was report they didn't want to play this Test match anyway. It was too close to the IPL. The, the difference in the Oval to Old Trafford is completely that the IPL starts next week. And these players are absolutely petrified of getting COVID, having to isolate and missing out on the IPL. It's, it's all about the IPL money. India have got the biggest muscles in the world of cricket. And it's all about the, the, the actual monetary side of what they bring and what they deliver. Uh, the ECB... Uh, they will not want to fall out with the BCCI. Uh, the World Game doesn't want to fall out with, with the Indian Cricket Board. They are the powerhouse. Uh, but somewhere, somehow, uh, I, I do believe that some other muscles have to start to be flexed because they just control the game. You know, and it's, it, it's things like this that hit home that, wait, I mean, they, they, they seem to be able to just do whatever they want at any time and everyone else has to accept it. I know we're in a very strange uh, a period of our lives, but... Um, you know, I do think, and it's been for a long, long time that the BCCI and the Indian Creek team generally be able, be able to act as exactly how they want, when they want, and how they want. Let's talk about the impact of these bubbles, though, because uh, we, we had one to a minor extent last year. Deep, I mean, you, you know, you, yeah. you, you <laughs> crikey, you, you've, you've spent some time, and presumably you've got another one to come now, have you? When you go into, into Dubai, yes, you've got right. to go and seal yourself right. away. I mean, just, just, just describe what it is like to be in, in that sort of environment. Obviously, I mean, it's when I mean, it, it's self uh, kind of uh, defines itself. Uh, you you are restricted to your room, to the ground, to a few places inside the hotel. Maybe uh, one of the restaurants, maybe where you have breakfast and food. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, uh, you know you you just kind of a small area that you can go to. For example, even to the ground. Uh, you're not allowed to obviously meet the players you're not allowed to kind of get onto the ground unless you really have to for example a pitch report or something and that too would be a couple of hours before the players would take the field or something so for example if it's an 11 o'clock start uh, your pitch report and everything has to be around 9 in the morning so in India when, when the test series was on it was 9 a.m. starts and we would do the pitch report at 7, 7, 15 a.m. in the morning uh, just to make sure that nobody's there. So, so when, when the groundsmen are there, nobody else is there. So there are these small groups as well. So the, the groundsmen and the curators are part of one bubble. Uh, the, the commentators are part of one. The players are part of one. So they don't interact with each other. So, so you try and remain in the bubble as much as possible. And uh, just a quick one. Um, I know, I mean, uh, it's disappointing and, and obviously... Uh, Anger is one of the emotions which is which is quite predominant right now at whatever's happening. But it's a little unfair, I think, what Michael mentioned about BCCI doing whatever they want. I think end of the day, they do realize that it's, it's also important uh, that the game goes on. And I can assure you, uh, what I've heard is BCCI tried their utmost best to convince everyone involved to uh, carry on with the game. So... Yeah, I've, yeah. I, I think it's a little unfair to be uh, to kind of. I know. I mean, they, at times BCCI can be a, a favorite whipping boy, and the IPL especially can be the favorite whipping boy of a lot of people. Anything that goes wrong in the world, uh, blame it on the IPL. If it's same within India. I mean, I'm not just saying here. I mean, even in India, <clears throat> if there is a drought, that is IPL's fault. If there is a famine, that is an IPL's fault. So IPL ends up being <laughs> the favorite whipping boy. 
Yeah. Tell us about Virat Kohli. I mean, it's floated there the thought that, you know, how, how is he going to feel, I wonder? Because he, you know, you've been working mm. with us these last few weeks. You know how driven he's been yeah. to really want this series, hasn't he? I mean, I wonder how he'll be feeling today. Uh, obviously disappointed and, and one of the people who were, one of the players who were uh, kind of uh, uh, not, I mean, didn't want to take a chance because he's got his, what, really young daughter with him. Uh, obviously wife and daughter with him. Uh, so, yeah, but as, as you mentioned, uh, I think this, this, this test match will be played uh, next summer when India is over anyways for T20 and ODI. I think this... This test match will be clubbed along with that white ball series, is how I see it. Yeah, that would be a, a way out for everybody, I think, wouldn't it? Uh, if, you're, if you're just joining us, well, there's obviously no cricket. Uh, we'd be building up now to this final test match, and this was been a, a really enthralling series. It really has like a roller coaster, and who knows what might have happened. Unfortunately, we'll never know, at least you won't, over these next five days, because this, this fifth test has been cancelled as the, the, the official. Uh, ruling at the moment. Um, we say we had the word forfeit used earlier, but that was retracted uh, in an ECB statement. And all of that will come out in the wash at some stage. But the fact is, it's a huge disappointment for everybody, uh, but whatever aspect you're coming at this, uh, and particularly people who have paid their money to come and been looking forward to this for ages. Uh, this game has been has been cancelled and they're going to try and reschedule it. It's because of COVID, it's because of uh, the, the, the unease really in the Indian camp about the possible spread of coronavirus. Uh, their reserve physiotherapist tested positive on Wednesday and he's been the fellow because the, the, the main physio tested positive at the Oval, but he's been treating a number of players uh, and I think, well, clearly they felt uh, uneasy with the, uh, the, the negative results that they all uh, recorded yesterday. Not a single player tested positive yesterday in that round of PCR tests, but uh, there seems to be a loss of confidence anyway uh, in, in the, the, the not terribly secure bubble in which they're living. And that's a point worth making as well, I think, that, that the Indian players here have not been living anything like the restricted uh, existence. Uh, that those players who toured here last year uh, had to do. They've been allowed to go out into restaurants and sort of apply common sense, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm right in saying, but correct me if I'm wrong, that after the World Test Championship, the bulk of the Indian squad stayed in England yes. and kind of took a break. <laughs> uh, uh, um, Some caught COVID. So it's so just it, this week yeah. that they've been asked to go, that this week was the week that before the IPL they were going to go back into their they're kind of biosecure bubbles yeah. in their yeah. own room having room service for the week and then obviously to get on a plane to the UAE um, I, I think that's quite a frustration from the England side's perspective that England have been kept in quite a tighter bubble this summer still they've been allowed to do a few little things been allowed to play golf been allowed to go to restaurants if outside hmm. um, but it's been quite res you know, restrained for them and I think they feel that uh, the Indians have been pretty much doing well, there was a book launch a, a couple of weeks mm. ago, I'm led to believe. Ravi Shastri was at a book launch and was mingling and, you know, there's whispers and rumours that that's where he picked up it's COVID. Crazy. So I think from the England side's perspective, I think they feel that the Indians have pretty much been doing what they wish up until this week where it was meant to be, right, you're back in the bubble before the IPL. Um, <laughs> Deep's right about, uh, you know, the, the IPL being you know kind of uh, accused of many things but it, it, it is right that you know the game is at, at, at this kind of six week tournament every year mm. it always seems God, it, it brings in so much uh, money it brings in so much love actually you know, the fans love the IPL all, all across the world it's a great product but it does cause <laughs> a lot of kind of uh, headaches for, for many boards around the world yeah in your but can I just pack quickly of cards in your hands Michael. IPL trumps everything else I yeah think. it does yeah go on, deep carry on so uh, the other thing, as Michael mentioned, I think BCCI will be show causing a few people here. Uh, what I've read in the media as well and what my friends in the media have, have kind of told me as well. Obviously, BCCI is not too happy with, as Michael mentioned, uh, with a few incidents that has happened in terms of, you know, uh, going out because even though there wasn't a bubble but they had been asked to kind of uh, you know apply common sense and do what is needful because everyone has been part of bubbles they know what to do uh, so I think uh, the BCC as well is not too happy with the current situation and and few of them will be asked questions hmm, that's interesting look we've got we're gonna be on for about 10 minutes and um, what else we're getting uh, are we getting Daniel 
Gidney and Tom Harrison in the next 20 minutes or so. So we will, okay, so we can stay on a bit longer. I was just going to build up there to saying goodbye at, at 11 o'clock. But we, we'll carry on. So we'll see. Um, Tom Harrison, of course, is the uh, chief executive of, uh, of ECB. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep chatting a little while. I was actually going to mention about the England team, but anyway, for now, well, carry on. Well, I mean, no, I'm just intrigued that the notion of playing a test match, perhaps to finish this series next summer, I've just tossed out the <laughs> thought that if they do that, best play it at Old Trafford, I think. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, and yeah. possibly, don't know whether the selection still stands. They may have to pick a fresh team. But, but actually, Old Trafford hasn't got a test match well, next year. Exactly. Right? So yes. it would be perfect. Yeah. Just, uh, I mean, on, on the actual cricket, you mentioned Virat Kohli. You know, India have won in Australia. Had a great chance of winning here in the UK. And mm. then they go to South Africa. I don't think they've ever done that in their, their time as a test True. nation of winning away in Australia, away in the UK and away in South Africa in the same calendar year. That yeah. is uh, that's something that now... Well, uh, won't they, be possible. Well, they might argue that it is possible and has been done. Yeah. Well, well, it depends on the courts. <laughs> yes, depends exactly. where this game but goes in the, the courts. Yeah, <laughs> could, uh, yeah. Just to be clear, uh, we are going to say goodbye to our Radio 4 Longwave listeners in uh, nine minutes and 12 seconds. Uh, and we will continue on um, Five Live Sports Extra to, to, yeah, to, to, to chat some more and to talk to the authorities and so on. So if you want to uh, stick with us on Radio 4 Longwave, you know where to find us. Otherwise, we will say goodbye to you shortly. Um, so let's, before they go, let's... Ch- we will never know about this, the England changes and what might have happened and, yeah. and, and Joss Butler and Johnny Bairstow and, and so on. I've not really had your thoughts either on that, Michael. But uh, if, what struck me when I interviewed Joe Root the other day was how utterly adamant and forceful he was about saying Joss Butler will play. Because I've built up one of my usual mm. rambling questions about, uh, you know, a bit tricky. Johnny's been batting all right and Joss might not be going to Australia. And he came straight in, boom. I said, Joss Butler is vice-captain of this team and he is playing on Friday. I mean, it's quite unusual for Root to be quite so forceful. But it's a good answer. Yeah, it was a good answer. <laughs> it took me by surprise. Next question, yeah. Jonathan. Yeah. But <laughs> I, mean, I, I guess Johnny Bairstow would have missed out. Yes, exactly. You know, Ollie Pope, you would think, would have played on the back of the way that he played last week. I, I'm, you know, I, I think Moeen Ali would have played again. I, I personally would have gone with Jack Leach this week uh, and Mark Wood. Uh, I think this, this England attack needed something different, certainly needed pace. And I'm not too sure the offspring of Moeen Ali's been that much of a threat to the right-handers of, of India. So um, I would have personally gone with Jack Leach and Mark Wood into the, the bowling attack. Um, you know, you're looking at someone like uh, Craig Overton would have possibly... Missed. I'd, yes, I'd yes. have certainly wheeled out Robinson and Jimmy Anderson again. Indeed, wound them <laughs> just, up. Let's just wheel <laughs> them out on some kind of trolley and say, please go again. Actually, ironically, it, it looks like a pretty good bowling day today. Yeah. <laughs> What's also <laughs> intriguing is uh, I presume that... Uh, the given the circumstances, they hadn't quietly told X and Y who was going to play in this game. They hadn't told Johnny, let's say, that oh, yes. actually Ollie Pope's got that slot. Yeah. <laughs> Which I expect it's all left hanging in the air, yes. and then we get going I'm sure again. I reckon, I reckon the 11 will have known they were playing last night. Do you reckon? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they'll have told the 11. <laughs> they just don't release it to people like us, Victor. <laughs> were you surprised that Butler was brought back so instantly? Because I mean, he hasn't had much of a summer with the bat. Bairstow hasn't had a big score, but he's been he's been ticking over with his 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 thirties. His, uh, his second highest run score, I think, next to Joe Root. So, um, were you surprised how whoosh, quickly? No, no. If, if, if Joe Root sees Joss Butler as his number one, hmm. you know, and your number one is now back available to play, you go back with him, and that's you know whether it's right or wrong, whether you agree or disagree. If you're the captain and, and the coach, and you see Joss Butler as your number one wicketkeeper batsman at the minute, well, he comes back into the team. I guess that the cloud is, as you mentioned, you know, Australia. Yes. Uh, Joss already let them know that he won't be going to the Ashes. We don't know that. You know, we don't know the answer to that question. I'm guessing, and I would think if he w- was going to play here, you would think he's given the indication that he will be going to the Ashes because if he's given the indication that he wouldn't be playing in Australia. I would have kept with someone like Johnny Bairstow who potentially will definitely go to Australia. We don't know those answers. We actually no. haven't got a clue who was going to play, I guess, because there's no test match. No, <laughs> no I know. And that's, again, it just does leave those threads dangling, doesn't it, Victor? I mean, were you surprised that Butler came back or was likely to well, come no, back? Well, the logic is that he's he missed a test not because he hasn't scored stacks of runs, but because he's having a baby, mm. which is sort of standard practice in the 21st century. Yeah. Uh, and that's the deal. And, you know, if it had been someone else, the same would apply. So I, I don't think so. And, and they see him, even though he's had a sort of disappointing summer with the bat, I think they see him as an integral part of the sort of senior management almost. Mm. And I think, I imagine that Joe likes having him out there mm. as a, for his cricket brain and his, you know, standing in the team. 
Um, and, uh, so it's logical that he would come yeah, back. I think you go back to that last day at the Oval when they needed two nine to one. It, it was always going to be tough. It's a lot of runs, but you know, I, I think this England team need Ben Stokes and Josh Butler in that dressing room. I think yeah. those two, particularly Ben, I, th- I think he's got that presence. Probably like Sir Ian mm. Botham used to and Freddie Flintoff. You know, you know Kevin Peterson style characters in your dressing room that you know they'd, they'd walk around and say, "We'll get these." You know, and just give one or two other players that necessarily might be walking into that dressing room. Think, oh, no chance. Yeah. Just a little bit of a, wait a minute. This this is quite possible. We saw that with Butler last year against Pakistan on this venue, when he and uh, Chris Wokes put on that amazing partnership in the chase of two seventy odd. Um, whether Joss is in form or not, I think the opposition fear him. You know, I do think they always think, oh, Butler could play one of those innings that could change the course of a match. Not saying that they don't fear Johnny Bairstow, but I do think that this. It's Joss Butler character in the opposing dressing room. I think he gets more of a mention. Yes. And, and, and probably that's the reason why Joe Root uh, would, would have continued with him. And you mentioned Ben Stokes. I mean, it, it, not in the World T20, yeah. which I, I, I suspect we expected, didn't we? I mean, if you look at the commitment, and we're talking about bubbles and everything else, the mm-hmm. commitment that some of those are going to have to give to go to the World T20 and then on to Australia. Yeah. I mean, there's it, it's a huge amount. I mean, talking about Johnny Bairstow is very likely to be one yeah. of those. I mean, looking at the Ashes, I guess, I, 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 I'm... I love all formats of the game, but Test cricket's the the number one for yeah. me. And, and and looking at it a little bit selfishly in terms of Test cricket and the Ashes, I thought straight away, well, I just hope he's all right for the Ashes. I hope he's. And if there's one format actually in in, in the game that you could say that England can do without Ben Stokes, it's probably T20. Yeah. Cricket. It's probably the one kind of element of his game that he needs to just master he's not quite mastered he's mm. probably not got his position and the quite unsure does he bat three does he bat four does he bat five six how did he bowl him and what stage does he get that uh, ball in his hand but yeah uh, it didn't surprise me and it didn't disappoint me because I hope it gives him a bit more time and I hope he's on that plane to Australia for the Ashes yeah and I agree with that I think actually if you were analysing him he's a better red ball cricketer yeah. than he is a white ball cricketer yeah. Ben Stokes uh, he's more likely to change a red ball game. Your music's playing. We've got some music. I don't, don't recognise that, but uh, there's something <laughs> echoing round an empty Old Trafford. But that, that's that's the problem for for players and um, media men at the moment. It's just this constant. I'm all sort of half pleased. Mm. I'm out of it. <laughs> it's constant uncertainty. You just don't know what's around the corner. No. Um, we're surprised today, but we don't know whether the Ashes is going to happen mm. for certain or who's going to play. It's it's. it's <laughs> How much longer do we go on with this uncertainty? We don't know. No, no, we don't. Um, a couple of minutes left for Radio 4 Longwave listeners. It'll be the last time we speak to them for a while. Um, it's, it's, been a, <laughs> I mean, it's been a massive summer, the amount of cricket that's been played. Um, but it, it, was, it was a really sad way for this Test Series yeah. to bow out. I mean, it's been, it's been terrific cricket in it. Yeah, it has. I mean, you go back to the New Zealand Series where, you know, there was some tremendous cricket played by New Zealand and then they win the, won the Test Championship final um, we've had the launch of the 100 that's been a success we've seen uh, a, a brilliant Test series against uh, the Indians that you know unfortunately we, we haven't got the finale you yeah. know we haven't got that last 15 minutes where you, you know you want you want the, the best bits almost to come and we've kind of had it taken away from us um, you know we're in strange times Aggers strange yeah. strange times and Let's hope that with, uh, over the next few months uh, things can improve and things like this won't, won't, won't happen in the future. Let's start my preamble as a farewell to Radio 4 Longwave listeners then who are going uh, shortly. Tom Harrison, I can see in the back of the box, is be talking to us on 5 Live Sports Action. I want to say goodbye to our uh, Longwave listeners in about 35 seconds or so. Uh, I'm just really sorry that we brought you this news. It's a, re- it's a real shame. Uh, everybody was so looking forward to the climax of this test series and it's a real shame that it's, 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 it's come to now to at the moment. There's still that positive thought uh, that I see there that the two boards are talking about maybe rescheduling uh, the match. So for now, for our long way listeners, that's going to be uh, it. Um, I've got another minute to go, haven't I? I've misread my clock, so my goodness, another couple of questions. <laughs> I was getting all excited there. Um, I've got manual Phil. clock, so we're doing okay. No, we're doing okay. I mean, it would be, if, if, if they can... If they can reschedule it, and we'll get, we'll get Tom's thoughts on that. I suspect at the moment that actually that's quite a long way from his thoughts. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, you know, could, could you build up to sort no. of a one-off? No. You, you can reschedule it for me, but you can't have the dramatic end to a series which has been played over seven weeks. It's the drama of the, the mentality mm. of the players. You see players go through a little bit of the ebb and flow. The series has ebbed and flowed, and you get to this final stage at Old Trafford where three days have sold out. 
crowd, the buzzing energy about this series of, 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 of go from Lords to uh, to Headingley, um, to to what the Indians did at the Oval to now, uh, and we don't quite get that that, that nice piece of dessert. It's I'm reading shame. my clock correctly now, Michael. So <laughs> I'm going to start to say goodbye to our long wave listeners. Thanks for your company throughout the summer. We do and we will be covering uh, the Ashes. However, that is done. Uh, we will be there and thoroughly look forward to that. I'm going to speak to Tom Harrison in a second on Five Live Sports Extra, and uh, from all of you on Ready for Long Wave, and from us here at Old Trafford. Thanks for your company, and we wish you uh, goodbye. Right, off they go. I got my clock right that time. Uh, Tom, dear me. Um, well, where, where do we start? I think you've had a bit of a night. Yeah, a long night. Um, just really sad, isn't it, actually? Uh, I think that's the, the sort of enduring sentiment around the ground, and uh, I'm sure for uh, the many thousands of people who were due to come and watch this, uh, this compelling end to a, an amazing test series that uh, that we've had it is just a very very sad day yeah it, it just all seemed to be positive yesterday i mean the tests for the indian players came back negative and, and so on so i mean were you Im imagining that the game would go ahead yesterday yeah i was and i mean the bottom line is that you can't be um flippant or um light-hearted about issues with uh mental health and that is what this is about and and through this pandemic we've seen this uh, manifests itself in different ways. Um, this uh, Indian cricket team have been an unbelievable exemplary uh, tour, is it, touring team for, for, for India as great ambassadors for their country. They've been wonderful tourists that have enthralled crowds all the way uh, around the country this year. <clears throat> but they've been here for a long time. And I think that the other thing just to bear in mind is, is playing at this level uh, week after week is, mm. is, is difficult. And, it, and, and when you are doing it in the environment that we're all living in, um, even if it feels like we're kind of emerging from the pandemic in this country. Uh, for the players, life is different. Um, there, you know, we have, it's not a biosecure environment, but there are standards in place uh, that, that make it difficult to live life normally. And I think that just builds over time. And, um, and when it creeps into a, a, an environment, it can accelerate very quickly. We've seen that ourselves, actually, in, in the past. So um, huge sympathy with, with players on both sides um, and massive sympathy with fans. Um, who aren't going to get to see what we hope would be the end of this? Well, summer. no. And walking in, I described it as feeling hollow and empty, and and, and it does. And all those concessions set up around the back here, are all, all all ready to go. I mean, what, yeah. what's your what's your what's your message to them? Well, my message is we're really sorry. Um, uh, I actually walked past. It was a, a forlorn-looking lanky, the giraffe, on the way into the ground with his head slumped, and uh, yeah. it was kind of a, an exact kind of uh, I think perfect description of how I feel about this and, and how fans will feel across the country that it's just um, you know we were looking forward to this uh, culmination of this test series it isn't going to happen no. hopefully we can we can get it on at some other time but clearly it's not going to be the same as having a fifth test after four brilliant matches people are bound to point the finger at the IPL which is looming large of course um, from the BCCI's obs interest in that but also the Indian players interest in the IPL um, what, what's what's your thoughts on or view on that I, I think that's unfair actually um, I think it's really unfair I think this is uh, to do, I think the the, the the BCCI um, and this Indian cricket team and their captain all uh, want to make their mark in test cricket and that is how they judge themselves is how they perform in test cricket like our players uh, and like our fans. Um, so I don't think that is something that needs to worry people uh, who feel there may be an agenda at hand here. It just isn't the case. Um, and I think, you know, I was on the phone all night to our colleagues in, in India and some of them in Dubai um, to, to find different ways of getting this uh, test match played um, to delay it by a day to delay it by two days to give comfort that we can do more testing in this environment um, as you as you rightly pointed out we haven't had a, a, a positive test in the recent couple of rounds so um, but I think once those uh, those fears creep in mm. they can be very hard to shift and um, you know so it's so it's uh, turned out to be in this case so just a yeah, no winners in this one, Angus. No, absolutely. Yeah. But it sounds as if we're saying as if the BCCI actually were trying hard to get this get this game on as well, but in fact the players got into their minds that they'd had 100%, enough. 100% they were. I mean, this is a strong relationship that uh, uh, between the ECB and the BCCI. They have, um, you know, throughout this, you know, throughout this series, but actually throughout the, the last few years, we've been working incredibly closely together to try and help build test cricket, to build cricket um, around the world, not just in our own... Uh, our own territories uh, 
and it's a very close relationship and they, those relationships get tested at times like this but we will definitely come through this mm. probably even stronger than we went in um, you know the, we have to understand uh, that when it comes to matters as I said earlier matters of mental health uh, listening to players listening to what they're telling us and it's not just uh, in this case but it's to do with schedule it's to do with the ongoing commitments and obligations that we ask players to fulfill um, administrators have to keep listening and make sure that we're taking action against um, uh, putting too much pressure on players to mm. continually fulfil obligations. And, and does this shine a spotlight on the ashes as well? I mean, you know, there's all those negotiations going on where, where, where we understand with you and Cricket Australia and so on, yeah. but does this other strength in your hand is the wrong way to say it, but I mean, does this illustrate the point that no doubt you and the England players are making? Yes, and I think it's understood by uh, Cricket Australia as well. Um, those conversations will, will keep going. And uh, um, again, it's... Uh, uh, there's there's nothing more important than the health and well-being of, of our players. Now it's funny when you when you pull a hamstring or a calf muscle, everyone understands you're going to be sitting on the sidelines for a while. But yeah. um, I think we're only just starting to understand the the situation with respect to mental health. But it's exactly the same. And players playing at this level of the game need to be as mentally fit as they are physically fit in order to to do what fans expect them to do which is pretty much win every game they play yeah. um, and that's what that, that's what international cricketers are put through these days the question of the results I don't know if it, how important it is in, in, in the short term um, but I mean the, the statement now about it being forfeited which was retracted because it is very sensitive all this too isn't it I mean I'm sure as far as insurance and so on um, is, is concerned it's it's sensitive but to talk about teams forfeiting and so on I mean it's it's, it's quite a, well as you know with the Pakistan uh, incident in 2006 I mean it also comes with a bit of a not a stigma but it's, it's very sensitive isn't it so I mean yeah. where, where, where are we with the outcome of this game well we again it's not one for today actually as you rightly pointed out I think today is all about um, making sure that we uh, have fronted this in terms of what has happened why it's happened uh, what the situation is with respect to the immediate uh, the immediate term um, thoughts will turn to that uh, soon and we'll obviously that's not a decision uh, for us it's a decision for ICC to think about um, mm. in the context of the World Test Championship um, look and, and no one's trying to score points here with, if you pardon the pun yeah, yeah. Um, it's about uh, making the right decisions um, given the context of, of what's taken place uh, and to be fair to each side that's, that's all we're asking for and that's, um, that, that process will, will, uh, will take place over the coming weeks but it's not, it's not something that, that concerns us um, it, it, unduly, we just expect um, that that you know the people that are in, in place to make those decisions to make those decisions. Yeah. I mean, of all the games England, England have been involved in over uh, the last year or so, um, of course England did we, we, we withdrew from South Africa. Mm. Uh, I mean, with that presumably, given that we've been on, been on both sides of that now, I mean, you could appreciate the, the Indian view, perhaps but more intently because you were in it before yeah. Christmas uh, exactly right and, um, and Sri Lanka before that when yes. we um, for, and, and each is different in its own in its own way but what what you you know you, what you do understand is that uh, there is a uh, the, 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 the topic of touring and touring within the context of a pandemic over time um, it, it does build up it's, it's a kind of um, uh, it, it exacerbates over time uh, and, and that wear on your mental health and your well-being and your ability to continue to perform. Um, what people, I think, need to try and understand is when you're playing international cricket, on the field is a very anxiety-inducing environment, clearly, and, and very few people are, are at the level to be able to cope mm. with that. And actually what the, the bubble environment or indeed the managed living environment off the field is, is also uh, anxiety-inducing. And people... Agus, you'll know this because you've spent enough time in these bubbles to mm. know the impact it has on sure, you or yeah. on your colleagues who, yeah. who aren't then going out and performing um, as you once did, uh, <laughs> you know, on, on the international stage. So there is no let up. It's, it's a, you know, you have no opportunity to decompress. And, and that's why when you take into account that this Indian cricket team have been here since before the World Test Championship in the beginning of June, it's, a, it's an extraordinarily long period of time, no matter how... Um, I guess how 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 easy we've tried to make it for um, to to live a normal life. The fact of the matter is, it isn't a normal life. Mm. Um, and I think over time that 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 uh, that pressure builds up, and it uh, and it can be brought to bear very quickly uh, when something happens. And clearly, what happened was uh, someone in the environment uh, contracted COVID, and um, uh, you know that that was the. 
the start of the uh, the concerns that uh, that came out since then. Yeah, just looking at the um, the England program coming up. I mean, I, I was just jotting through. I'm not going to select the Ashes team, obviously, but I mean, there are, there might have been four or five players likely to be in the Ashes who are going to the World T20 in, mm. in Dubai now. I mean, are they going to be in a sort of a bubble environment all the way through from the start of, of, of that and, and obviously time building up to the start of that World T20 as well, right through to the end of the Ashes? Well, this is what we're trying to understand with respect to uh, conditions in Australia. Now, my understanding is, and there are differing reports and the differing parts of uh, Australia will have different conditions associated with it. There are parts of Australia which are currently in, in coming towards the end of snap lockdowns or mm. uh, extended lockdowns. And there are other parts of Australia where life is, to all intents and purposes, normal. Um, we are playing, or due to play, across you know, large parts of Australia where the rules are different, uh, depending on where you go. So those are the complexities of they the discussion. They could change very quickly, though, as well. And they absolutely yeah. could change. Yeah. And, you know, the general situation in Australia is that vaccination rates are improving very quickly. Uh, and we hope that by, let's say, you know, middle of November, that they've reached targets which might enable uh, decisions to be made to, to loosen restrictions and, uh, and move into the kind of environment we're used to seeing in the UK mm. of late since uh, middle of August. So um, those conversations are undergoing. We, we are working with Cricket Australia. And we have huge you know, sympathy with the Australian government around um, you know, how they're trying to manage uh, this situation for themselves. So it's about everyone working together to get the right answers to the questions that we're asking and that the players are asking of us. Yeah. Um, as I said, no one's being unreasonable here. No, no. Uh, everyone just needs to get clarity as soon as possible. And, and I mean, is, is a postponement totally off the... Off the, off the I suspect so. Yeah. Um, I, I think an Ashes series is a... Uh, uh, well, it's a massive deal for um, yeah. uh, world cricket. It's. Uh, uh, I, I put myself in that situation thinking... Uh, you know, what would it take to postpone a home Ashes series? And, it, and it's, uh, I think that's probably not where we're going to end up. Um, it's a, uh, an iconic test series that actually global test cricket, particularly after uh, today and uh, the disappointment today, fans are going to want to see uh, us, playing, uh, us playing test cricket in Australia as soon as possible. So, look, let's hope that we can get all of this agreed um, and that we can take our, our best team to Australia and, uh, and have a great experience over there. Um, and hopefully bring back the ashes. That's ultimately yeah. what we're trying to do. Well, Tom, I've got, I've got to let you go in a second. Um, I mean, just your last thoughts on, on all of this. Um, I mean, you, you obviously knew uh, what it did during the night this was going to happen. I mean, you must have been dreading turning up, I guess. Well, I, I, I was hopeful during the night we might find um, a, a kind of compromise. Um, that, isn't, that hasn't turned out to be the case. So um, just really sad for, for, for fans uh, who were coming and um, for everyone involved, people watching on TV around the country and uh, watching the highlights, and it's just not going to be much to watch tonight. It's just a very sad day for everyone involved. There are no winners here. I can tell you that no one's feeling uh, particularly good about this, um, and uh, it's a sad day for everyone, really. Yeah. Just a last question for you, Tom, before you go. Um, this morning, Yorkshire have accepted there was, quote, no question that Azim Rafiq was the victim of racial harassment and bullying during his first spell at the county. Last summer, Rafiq made serious allegations about his time at the club, forcing Yorkshire to appoint lawyers to launch an investigation with an independent panel also put in place to oversee it. A summary of the panel's findings and recommendations was finally published at nine o'clock this morning. A statement from the, the county chairman, Roger Hutton, said there's no question that Azim Rafiq, during his first spell as a player at Yorkshire, was the victim of racial harassment. He's also subsequently the victim of bullying. On behalf of all at Yorkshire, I wish to extend my sincere, profound and unreserved apologies to Azim and to his family. I just wonder, Chief Executive of ECP, what you have to say about that. Well, it's, um, it's, it's very sad um, to hear uh, that. And obviously, we've received a copy of that summary, uh, which Yorkshire have, um, have published. Uh, we'll be working way, our way through that as a regulator, as not just the governing body, but we'll be working a, as a regulator, taking a view on uh, what uh, further action is required there. But what is really clear, and it's appropriate now to just uh, underline uh, the, the Yorkshire Cricket County Cricket Club's statement there around an apology to Azim Rafiq and what he has clearly been uh, subjected to uh, at times during his uh, cricket career. And it's that you know, we have no, there is no place in this game for. Uh, for racism. Uh, we've made that abundantly clear and um, apologies to, sincere and heartfelt apologies to Azim 
um, and his family for what they've been put through yeah. um, as a result of well, um, how seriously that, do you, that behaviour. Do you, how seriously do you take those, those comments there? Well, I, it's the first time I've heard them, but right. um, I will. Uh, I, I think it's a... We, the, the answer to your question about how seriously do we take this thing, it's the very most serious thing that we can do is, is provide the environment for people to, uh, to be able to partake in the game, whatever that means, if it's playing, volunteering, umpiring, you know, scoring, whatever it is, uh, to, to have a place in the game where you can be yourself. And we've been really clear about our position, not just on racism, but across the board on um, all forms of discrimination. Uh, and we need to work very, very hard to ensure that uh, this kind of thing is eradicated through our sport. Tom, we've had a long day. Thanks for coming to see us. No we problem. Appreciate no. it. And again, you know, I mean, everybody I know will be devastated at what's, what's happened here. But um, anyway, thank you for coming to see us. No problem. Thank you. Tom Harrison, the Chief Executive of uh, the ECB. We'll be speaking to Daniel Gidney uh, in a moment. But uh, Ali's got, had an impossible job there, I think, because she's been looking at where they might possibly fit this test match into uh, proceedings next next summer. I mean, if the ECB can't do it, Ali, I don't know how you've managed to, <laughs> managed to do that, but, but well done. Well, well, what, 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 have you, what have you looked at? Well, only simply looking at the international schedule next summer. And of course, we know that India are due to return to England for uh, a white ball series. Um, so there's test matches three of them against New Zealand which go until June the 27th and then the India white ball series is due to start on July the 1st until the 14th so whether some pragmatism might come into play there where it's looked at switching some of those white ball matches and, and using that period of time to stage a test match instead um, I haven't married that up against what fixtures are going on at Old Trafford at that well, time no. but I mean that, that, that does seem to be if that is an agreement that is reached that is a possibility that, that I'm sure will be something that's on the table yeah oh well, that's, that's interesting I mean it would mean of course uh, India bringing a, a whole different set of players <laughs> test match well, players yeah. and, uh, it's not the same is it it's no logistically I mean, it it's brings a, in different yeah. questions no, it certainly does OK, Ali, thank you. We'll see what happens with that. At least they've got a blank sheet of paper to start with at the moment, more or less. Apart from the, the test dates are all scheduled in now. If you, uh, they think we're doing yesterday or the day before, if you're looking at uh, the test matches for next summer. Um, the news here that the fifth and final test match against India has been cancelled. Uh, that's the word that's being used at the moment. There's no question of what the result is as such at the moment. Um, but the fact is that no players are here. There are a few spectators wandering around rather aimlessly uh, and others sitting on the balcony of that hotel that we got to know uh, very well last year, of course, up on the uh, edge of the ground there. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very sad way for the, international, uh, the men's international summer to come to, uh, to, come to an end.